Welcome back. So, yet again, we have more Christmas in May because we have another couple of surprise unboxings today. I'm just, I'm beside myself with delight. So when we come back, we are going to get started. box and as you can see I have opened them and my knife is safely out of the way. No harm no foul. The first box is from Lisa from Desert Dragon Works, our resident artist and this is always fun. So I wasn't expecting this by the way so now please note Lisa uses painter's tape painter's tape is a low tack tape. You stick this on, you take it off. It doesn't stick like glue. It's not like, what is it, Gorilla Tape? That's the one. You put that stuff on, it's never coming off again. No, this is very, very different. And Elisa's packages are always really easy to unwrap. Now, I'm sure a lot of this is because you know, as an artist, excuse me, who sells her work, I'm sure that she ships out a lot. And of course, you don't want your artwork destroyed because somebody can't get it out of the plastic. Well, this is, look what we've got. Terrific parrot. And this, uh, I think this, Lisa, is this a parrot? She does parrot rescue, so she would know. Is this a parrot? I think maybe, let's see what his friend looks like. I guess this, well, we have parrot-like birds. And I know that some, some birds like this are, are actually conures or macaws or other things. I'm not, I'm not a bird person. I know a lot about cats though. So look at these, these are terrific. These are beautiful thick plates too. Just lovely. Oh, I, I have a feeling we're going to really be able to do some great project work with these. All right, bubble wrap is going down for Audie. We'll see how he makes out. Audie is outside right now. Um, it's a beautiful warm day. Oh, I shouldn't be talking while I'm doing this. Look at this. I will get you a picture of this. This is a, a swan. And the little wing is actually a separate piece of porcelain. All right, let me see if I can show this to you. See right here, this little wing? Watch. Look. It's a separate piece of porcelain up there. See, I can just stick that tape right behind it. I'm probably going to have to take a couple of pictures of this so you can see what this looks like. This is really beautiful. It's, I am assuming, um, oh, and it's a lovely Japanese piece too. I'm assuming this was made by taking, um, a porcelain piece, this little bowl, and then laying um, a bit of clay on top. And then they would have to somehow prop it up because ordinarily when it would be fired, it would sort of drop. In. I'm going to have to look that up. There is a technique here, and I would love to know how they did it. I believe they probably propped it up with something that would hold up in the kill. But that's, that's an amazing little piece. That really is. Oh, I know. 
Lisa's handiwork. All right, all right, all right. This is terrific. All right, let me get this on. This is a terrific little Victorian box. Look at this. Boy, there's so many embellishments on this. Look at that. And let's see what we've got inside. We have... Are you porcelain too? Yes. Yes. All right. This is... I'm, or not, I'm not sure if this is porcelain or enameled wire. Enameled wire, that's what it sounds like. Isn't this beautiful? Such a sweet little basket. And that was inside this, which is our little box, our little floral box. Let me see if I can get that back on. Oh, yeah. I I'm great at taking things apart. I'm not so great at putting them back together again. Here we go. Look at that. That is just an amazing little thing. It's astounding. All right. Well, Lisa has struck again, obviously. Yet another bird. Here we go. And this is a beautiful yellow bird. These are great. These are great, great plates. No plates. Oh, and our yellow bird again. Yeah, this is wonderful. Wow, oh, they're just so very pretty. And I've never seen china like that with different birds. Oh, you are cute. You are made in occupied Japan. It's a beautiful little teapot. Um, that's terrific. Oh, that would look great on top of a tidbit tray. You know it would. <laughs> All right, this. I suspect this was a hand-painted piece because it's signed off Iris. It's a little baby bird looking for something to eat. And what do you want to bet? This was an individual ashtray. They used to do these back in the 50s and 60s. The, the main use for them was card parties, uh, where at this point, everybody smoked. They estimate that in that the mid-century, that half of the American households uh, had a smoker. And, uh, of course, the secondhand smoke proponents would tell you that means basically half the American homes were full of smoke. And they would have card parties. They would use highly decorative little ashtrays, um, very often comical like this, like the little baby bird waiting for something to go into its little mouth. And the ashtrays would only hold perhaps one or two cigarettes, uh, but they were individual. You still see a great many of them today when you check out places uh, like eBay and Etsy. Uh, the little tiny ashtrays that are shaped like the suits of a card, a diamond, a heart, a club, a spade. Those were ashtrays specifically for card parties. And you would get a set of four, and you would have four people around the card table playing whist, and everybody would have their own ashtray. But remember, these were the days when the well-appointed household had a cigarette box on the table that was full of cigarettes, and you would just take a cigarette if you wanted one, like you'd take an after-dinner mint. Um, the cigarettes at that time were not, they hadn't really become like personal items the way they would be considered today. Everybody has their own little pack and their own little brand and it lives in their pocket. No, it was just sort of a communal thing. Here's your cigarette, here's your after dinner mint, you know, the bars over there, help yourself. Very different times. Oh, what are you? Oh my, look at this. This is a little tea bag holder and it's marked London. So is that cute? 
Um, that definitely makes a statement on more than one level. No, let's see what we have here. Ah, we have a cup to go with our little yellow bird set. That is delightful. And again, uh, painter's tape because you know, she doesn't make me fight my way through these boxes, thank goodness. A little friend for the little ashtray because these, this one is not signed off. This one is signed off Iris. This one is not. Again, your little ashtrays like this would, would come in usually in sets of four for everyone at the card table. So yes, I believe these were little individual ashtrays. Well, is this a cute little assortment of goodies or what? Very interesting. These, these are just, <laughs> these are delightful. Um, and those are probably going to go on tidbit trays. Now, let me show you this. Here. We've got this box here, which I am going to leave over here because the last time I did this, somebody pointed out that the boxes were covering up the space. So we're not going to do that again. Now, this is, this is something that I purchased. So this is how the seller has packed it. Um, and we've got a lot of newspaper. And as I've mentioned before, newspaper and newsprint are very heavy. There are two reasons you don't want to use this. Well, actually, there are three reasons you don't want to use this. The first is the weight. This is paper. It has weight. You can easily get the same volume of packing material with either styrofoam peanuts, which I loathe, or air pillows, which I love. Air pillows are wonderful. They're very easy to reuse. And you just don't have the cat jumping into the box, throwing them all over the place like you do with styrofoam peanuts. But this, no. Very heavy, for one thing. The newsprint is going to be all over my hands by the time I get down to the item that I've purchased. I'm going to take it out of the box. I'm going to hold it in my filthy hands. And I'm going to look at this and say, my goodness, this china is so dirty, the seller didn't even bother to wash it because I'm probably not going to realize that I just did that with my filthy hands. You know, that's just the way it is. You send somebody stuff, they, their hands get dirty opening the box. All they're going to remember is, you know, my hands were clean when I opened that box and that china, boy, that was grubby. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where... You, know, you are creating the problem for your buyer. And by the way, the third, the reason I almost forgot, is you're not supposed to burn that in your fireplace. So it, this is something that's going to have to go off to recycling if you have it, or trash if you don't. Not all communities have good recycling programs, but it's not even like you can take that and shove it into your fireplace or wood stove and get a little extra benefit out of it because this, this is on the don't burn list because of the inks and especially this, which is those semi-glossy magazine sections. Um, they've got inks and they've got paper finishers. You shouldn't breathe the fumes from this. So this is one of those things that in some communities, now of course, people watching this channel are from all over the world. Um, we have people from Australia, we have people from the UK, we have people from France, people from Singapore, you know, you name it. All kinds of communities have different ordinances about burning in your backyard. In some areas it's allowed, in some areas that's traditionally how you get rid of your paper waste. You burn it, you burn it in your fireplace or you burn it in the backyard. That's all there is to it. Um, so you never know what your buyer is going to have to do with this. For me, I'm going to send that off to recycling and hope they take it. I mean, it's newspaper. I know it's chemically treated newspaper, but I'm 
hoping they can make some use of it because that when I put air pillows into a package the person who gets the package is going to be able to use them again and it's not going to have to sit back and say gee do you think my recycling people will take it because I know I can't burn it in the backyard and by the way my hands are filthy you know so think about your buyer because remember you know take care of your buyers and they'll take care of you it's just uh, the fundamental rule of sales now we are I'm, I'm still jumping oh a crossword puzzle we gotta get a pen i cringe to think of how much that seller spent to ship this And now we've got the tape show. And bags! Oh my! Oh! Such an interesting aroma. What you can do with a bag like this, by the way, is you can blow it up. Uh, which I'm not going to do because this has a very peculiar smell and I don't know where it's been. Tie it off like a balloon. You fill this full of air and you can use this as air pillows. Now, you can't pack too tightly with this because even though it will hold the air, you know, it's not as securely made as a manufacturer's air pillow would be. But still, you can use this much more effectively as as fill for your bags. Um, it's sort of wasted like this. Oh, we got another one. Beautiful, huh? All right. Um, it's a little dirty. Um, I'm just going to you know, take the pictures as they are and never mind the dirt. But I am getting a lot of these bags and I do reuse those. I use them for um, my recycling. Uh, I have a large mop bucket. And I just drop this in and use it as a liner. And then I throw things like soda cans. I have a lot of soda cans. Um, this is diet cream soda. It's very tasty. Um, I will use this to get rid of my soda cans, so I'll save that. That will get reused, so I am not ungrateful for that. The rest of it, unfortunately, none of the bubble wrap is going to be reusable because it's all been taped to the point where, you know, it's it's done. I've got more paper. When we are all through with this, I am going to I am going to weigh all of this. Now this is clearly a teapot lid. And this is a beautiful lavender gray shape. Um, again, this this is dirty, this needs to be cleaned. And another don't do that to your buyers. Um, really. I believe I told you the worst was when I got uh, an antique license plate for a Christmas present for my neighbor, Caddy Corner opposite. He's a sweet old guy and he rides around in a golf cart. And I found him a uh, Pennsylvania license plate from something like 1927. I just thought he'd like to put it on his golf cart. I open the package. I take out the license plate. Now crawls a spider on the license plate. Uh, you have to know that is not a seller I'm going to go back to. It's like, geez, um, I wouldn't go so far as to say I am afraid of spiders, but I don't like them. And frankly, if I didn't have a gun, I would be afraid of them, but, you know, I've got a gun. They need to watch out for me. More paper? Oh, cardboard! This is going to be fun to see what this weighs. More bags, and I'm not complaining about the bags. I am going to be able to use them. Here. They do have a strange odor. Okay, we have bubble wrap and cardboard.
cardboard. This is obviously a teapot, and I'm guessing this was done to protect the spout. Oh, let's see. Well, you know, messy and weird as this packing job and strange smelling, everything is coming out just fine, and this teapot is gorgeous. Okay, the teapot arrived. It is in beautiful shape. Look at that. That is just, that's just beautiful. Now, of course, this is Japanese lusterware. Um, it needs a good washing, but we have a very interesting shape. We have the lock lid. Remember, we spoke about this last time. This little um, tab right here slides right underneath the lip of the rim and locks it in so that you can actually pour your tea without the, the lid tumbling down on the table. This is beautiful. This And look at the size of this. Um, I'm thinking we're, we've probably at least got a, a quart in here. Uh, wow. Beautiful. Okay, more paper. More paper. But again, you know, nothing is broken. So much as I may be making fun of this, it's coming through okay. Another bag. Boy, I'm not going to have to take shopping bags. For, when I when I shop, I usually bring my own bags. Um, and yes, I am a little freaky about that sort of thing. I bring my own bags. I believe in recycling, but um, and I recycle locally because the money from my local recycling goes to the parks department and they use that basically to provide playground equipment for children and to maintain we have a ballpark up the street uh like a, a legitimate baseball diamond which is wonderful except none of the kids around here follow the red Sox, so what can i say but the money that the county are and well the township gets from the items i put out to recycle goes into that uh that fund that takes care of the parks and makes safe places for the kids. So I have no problem with that, but I prefer to do my own recycling. So something like this, I'm going to, I'm going to use that to assist with my recycling. So I don't ordinarily get shopping bags unless I'm out and I need something to throw away my recycling in, in which case, you know, when I go to Walmart, I will put a few things in plastic bags and then put those plastic bags into the cloth bags I bring with me. Because, yeah, I am a big believer in waste not, want not. Oh, air pillows. More. More bags. Funny smelling. All right. All right. Very, very pretty Japanese salt pepper shaker. Um, this is lovely. It's just blue and white. Again, it needs the most of this stuff is dirty. It needs to be cleaned, but it's very pretty. Under that dirt is pretty. More bags very nice um this okay all right um we've got a cork in here these are going to have to be soaked all of this is going to have to be soaked for a while just to make sure i can get rid of that rather peculiar smell um now here comes what i bought this for Uh, 
Okay. Four bags. Two. Three. Four. We've got smaller ones. Saucers. One. Oh, look, two. This is the mixed group of China. Three. Four. Um, I had gotten a mixed set of China from eBay. That's what this is. And one is broken. I can tell you right now I can hear it. One, two, all right, let's take a look at this. Look at that. This is a lavender gray. That's a very nice match for the teapot lid. Um, a lavender gray. We've got birds and we've got trees. That is glorious. This one, same thing. And please, please, please tell me you are not the one broken. Oh, um, maybe it is. Get down here. Yep. This one and the bottom one is broken. And we've got this in pieces. So, what went wrong with this? Well, in part, you have to know this is not good packing material. What we have here is bags. Now, when you take a look at bags against, let me just grab some of this, because this is what Lisa used, against bubble wrap, there is no comparison. And here is our bubble wrap, here is our bag. When I pack plates like this, what I will usually do is I will pack up to maybe three plates in smaller bubble wrap. Bubble wrap with little bubbles and let's see if we have any of that. No, that's that's over here. Um, small little bubble wrap and then I will wrap the whole package up, the package of three plates up in bubble wrap like this big with the fat bubbles and it'll be wrapped up something along these lines. Of course the bubble wrap will fit. And then at that point, because each plate is carefully cushioned with plenty of bubble wrap, each plate is individually wrapped. So in between each plate, are, it's, it's at least two layers of bubble wrap. Usually, just because of the way I do it, um, and I fold, fold, it'll be like three layers on top of one plate, one layer on the bottom of the next. So there'll be four layers of a little thin bubble wrap in between each plate, and then it's wrapped in something very thick like this. And then that whole tight little package goes into a box which is sandwiched in, with a bunch of air pillows. And that's sort of my guarantee that things are not going to get unduly smashed. This one, the plate that I just put in here, that was that was broken because it was wrapped in a bag. If you know it it wasn't even wrapped in bubble wrap. Fortunately, this, which is a beautiful, beautiful piece, and this would have been heartbreaking if it had been broken. That came through just fine. I would have preferred not to lose these pretty plates 
if I had had my choice, it probably would have been one of the common plates that would have been broken. But, you know, it is what it is. Breakage happens. So, I'm not going to go too crazy about it. Obviously, I am going to write the seller and let them know it was broken. Um, but there's not a lot that can be done. Uh, I, for all I know, it was, was it? Yeah, priority. So it is insured, so a claim can be filed. Um, and fortunately, we have the unboxing on film. But other than that, you know, I had serious damage. I think it was three separate packages over this past holiday season that were damaged. It was extremely frustrating. Um, they, I, it's as if they were playing football with the packages. And I've heard from other people since that have said it, it was like the worst year for damages. So no matter how carefully you packed this past year, they were throwing the stuff off the trucks. This one, though, if you're going to pack China in a plastic bag and that's it, you are going to have breakage because, unfortunately, that plate was at the bottom of the stack, down at the very bottom. There was nothing, nothing to cushion it. So when somebody dropped it down a little too hard, oops, oh, well. Stay tuned. These are going to make fantastic tidbit trays. So we're going to have some fun with that. All right. Let's take a quick look at some word origins before we go. Because after broken china and my complaint about bags, although I have enough bags to last me for a month, let's just take a look at something a little more fun. Melancholy, black bile. The Greeks defined melancholia as the black bile that produces temperament. And they believed that it was the presence of too much black bile in the system, melas, black, and kole, bile, that caused the blues. This notion went down through the century. The Elizabethans thought Sully, sullen and gloomy people were suffering from this disease, which was very fashionable at that time among the ultra-refined. The favorite dose for depressed and fainting females was melancholy water. Oh, and for those of you who have been checking out Dr. Cat over on Reading the Past, she has this whole episode that she does on the four bodily humors. It's just, geez, it's just, that woman just studies the strangest stuff. Uh, and be sure to check out her episode on trash. Um, very interesting. Like I say, strangest stuff. I got to get my hands on her dissertation. That was just... I'm sure that would be really interesting. Naughty. Good for nothing. In the days of Miles Standish, they spoke of the naughty canoes, and this gives an idea of the original meaning of the word, worthless, of bad quality, or just good for naught. This was merely a stronger way of saying naught, which is derived from the Old English know it, know it, know it. That is no wit or nothing. Um, later on, naughty came to signify evil or corrupt as a naughty pack, that is, a woman of bad character. Not until fairly modern times did naughty come to describe a child's mischief as it does now. Uh, naughty is one of my favorite words, so I like this. Nice, formerly meant ignorant. In the Middle Ages, nice meant foolish or ignorant. For it comes from the Latin nescio, which is made up of ne, ne, not, and sio, which is to know. We get that with science. That's, that's science in there. 
Um, then, because ignorant people are often silent, its meaning changed to, to shy or coy. Sometimes shy folks get the reputation of being a little uppish because of their offish, yes, offish, offish ways. So the meaning of the word shifted until it meant hard to please or precise or exacting. We use it today in that sense when we say that is a nice exacting problem. Finally, it became general in its meaning, and now it was applied to many things, such as people of good taste and disposition. And all of our Austin fans are going to know uh, from Northanger Abbey that nice in the uh, 18th century, which was the time of, let's say, Jane Austen's mother or grandmother's day, nice meant neat and and trim and um you know a nice outfit for example was a well tailored outfit didn't mean pleasant good looking it just meant straight stitches so nice is a very interesting word i'm going to have to see if he's got some of my favorites like silly i do love silly that has a wonderful history all right so lisa Thank you so much. I'm still thinking about what in the world I'm going to be able to do with some of these things. Um, I'm definitely seeing tidbit tray toppers here with the little birds, but this is just wonderful. And to our Etsy seller, well, I'm going to weigh all of this and find out how much all of this packing material cost. Uh, and I'm sorry because he, I'm sorry for her because it cost her a lot more than she should have to pay for the postage. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Remember, tomorrow is project day, and we have a couple of small projects that are coming from the pieces that Karen sent last week. There were two pieces that need a little tiny bit of work and we're going to take care of that tomorrow because it's been a while since we've done a porcelain video. Now, so sorry this got over long. Have a great day everybody and I will see you all later.